Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in this sit down vlog kind of chit chat video, we're gonna talk about fake and replica luxury items and all the issues around that. So is it really bad to buy them or what exactly is really bad about buying them? So stay tuned if you wanna watch that. So I recently saw a video, uh, it just popped up on my YouTube feed and it was a girl doing an unboxing and sort of showing or revealing a new Louis Vuitton replica bag and she was kind of presenting it like this is my Louis Vuitton bag but it just happens to be a replica I was just really interested in because I'm used to this community and how we show our things and they're they're real things whatever price point or designer or high street whatever they are so I was just interested in how someone like presents a replica item I'd never really watched that and then also I was really interested in the comments underneath the video. So this was a really small channel, even smaller than mine. She only got like maybe 300 views. So I was just interested and the comments underneath were all positive, sort of all along the same lines of it's brilliant that you could get this for $30 instead of $1,000. And oh my God, the quality looks amazing. There is no difference. It was all very in support of it. And it kind of wound me up. And my gut reaction is obviously, and I'm saying obviously because if you follow me, then you kind of probably have similar interests to me. My gut reaction was just like very negative about fakes. In the past, I've had a friend in particular who's gone to places like Turkey and Morocco and said that, you know, oh, I'm really going to, I really want to get a Louis Vuitton bag. I'm going to get like a nice replica one when I go over there. And I'm there with my real bag in the corner going, mm -hmm, you know, and when she said like, why are you judgy or why don't you like it? I've always just said like it's just not right to buy fakes but to be honest with you how many of us could say that we really know why you know because if you go out and spend say thousands on a Chanel bag and someone comes along with a fake bag that they spent say even a super fake like 200 on what about it is wrong so I really wanted to break that down and test my assumption that it actually is really bad to buy counterfeit goods and I think if we've got time I want to talk about um inspired by or dupes as well as a secondary issue because that's a different issue so just to give my opinions and my thoughts now obviously I don't mind if people have got different opinions to me and when you do a sit down vlog like this it's starting a conversation with you guys and that conversation can carry on in the comments down below but to each other and towards me as well let's just keep it nice let's keep it respectful and there's no need to get personal or abusive to each other if you think that it's okay to own or even showcase on your social media fake bag feel free to make that statement down below but you're probably going to get met with lots of differing opinion but I want it to be an open and honest exchange so I watched this video and as I'm watching this video my assumptions or go that are very hostile to what I'm watching are these one is oh I don't like fakes because it's making the prestige of that brand kind of go down you know like this happened a few years, but well, a few, 20 years ago with Burberry. Burberry was seen as a very classic heritage brand alongside like Mulberry. And then Burberry became the accessory of choice of, you know, football hooligans and stuff. And it reduced the cachet. There was a mixture of real items, cheap diffusion line items that were mass produced, but were still Burberry products yeah. and fakes, baseball caps, belts, t-shirts, just so many products and all really cheap and and all kind of it brought down the cachet of the brand and if you remember for a while Burberry was a bit of a no-no in this country I think it still remained popular outside of Europe but for a while it was in the wilderness and then obviously they had a new creative director and they had a whole rebirth but what I'm saying is when there's an enormous amount of fakes out there of a particular brand it can reduce people's desire to have that so I've had, met a lot of people who are like I really like the Neverfull but I wouldn't buy one because when I go through an airport, I see hundreds of them and they all look to me like they're really crap quality and fake. So there's that angle. Stealing brand profits. It's not something that really concerns me. I'm not going to lose any sleep over whether Louis Vuitton or Chanel or the rich companies or individuals that are behind those brands are losing 1% or whatever it is of their billions in turnover because people are buying fakes instead. But it is something to consider. Poor labour conditions and unethical manufacturing. That is something that I have 
always thought, oh, you know, they're made in sweatshops. They stink of chemicals. If you ever see them, you know, I've, I've picked one up and handled one at a market stall just out of curiosity and put it back and they often smell or feel strange. You know, are they using inferior components and materials? Um, are they using, you know, are they being freighted all over the world? Um, are their children or vulnerable people making them in poor conditions for poor or no pay? All of that kind of thing, modern slavery. And also does it subsidize other criminal activities? So are there drug gangs who also sell huge amounts of these kind of fake goods and stuff? And do the profits from that feed back into other illegal enterprises that are essentially harmful to people? So those were all of my, those are the reasons that I would give, but I haven't got any evidence for that. It's just what I assume. And that's, so that's why I wanted to chat about it in this video today. So I made a comment on this video. I made the comment that um, I felt that I said to her, I just said to her in the comments, and it's interesting because all the comments were positive and I just felt like I needed something to balance it out and maybe counter that opinion. And I was like, look, you know, I have some, I'm lucky enough to have some real items. I can tell even through this video that your item is not a Louis Vuitton. It doesn't look like great quality. It won't last you as long as a Louis Vuitton piece. And, you know, you people had been asking um, where she got it in the name of the seller. And she was like, oh, I can't really say the name of the seller. And I thought, so part of you knows it's wrong because you know that you can't reveal where you got it from openly on social media, yet you're promoting it by showing it in an unboxing. I just thought the whole thing was really interesting. But um, I just made this general comment saying, you know, if you can't afford or you don't want to pay the price of that real item, there are loads of nice, good quality, real leather or whatever material that you can get that's less. You don't need to go to buying a replica. And I have just had probably about 20 comments back over a few weeks, all just very hostile saying, um, well, I'll tell you, I summarised the, the nature of the comments. They were mainly... She should be able to show what she wants on YouTube without your judgment. Who are you to judge? Well, that's like the argument about trolling. But I feel like we are. if you're going to put something contentious like that out there, then I'm allowed to make my opinion and express my opinion. I wasn't being abusive. I was just saying, hey, you know, I don't think that's ethical. Um, they were saying the real products, the real Louis Vuitton products aren't worth it. People are always on YouTube showing faulty items that they've bought that cost hundreds or thousands of pounds from various designers and they have to take it back to the store. So why would we want to buy the real thing? That's a valid point, maybe. Um, the fakes are so good now that they are as good as the real thing, but you pay a fraction of the price. I'm not sure I agree with that and that they're basically the same. So you have a Louis Vuitton bag, and then you have another bag that's made by artisans to exactly the same quality, but because it's not official, you can get it for $30. And so I didn't really agree with any of those comments, but there were some people saying, I'm a student, I only have X amount, I really like the style, but I don't wanna pay that price, so I'm happy with my fake, and I've had my fake for years and it's not falling apart. And so I just sort of thought, not that I'm prepared to be persuaded that it's a great idea to own fake bags, but I thought maybe my strong opinion is just a gut reaction. And have I actually got any evidence or proof that it is a bad thing? Or is it just my own snobbery that I think my things are better because they're real? So that's what I wanted to like discuss and bring up in this video and see what I could find out. So... Um, I'm going to break it down point by point. I know I'm looking at notes, but it just keeps me on track because this is more of a, there are points and facts that I want to sort of talk about in this video. So what's the truth? So let's talk about the legal thing first. So I, the kind of things that I looked at when I was researching online were what are the legal things? So you've got criminal activity and civil things where people could be open to lawsuits. So it is illegal, obviously, to say list something on eBay as the real deal and make out like it's the real deal and it's a fake. It's a real issue because you, you're not only, you know, that girl that bought that bag that I used as an example went into it knowing it was a replica. She paid $30 knowing it was a replica. So in terms of her being a victim, she's not, she's made an educated choice to buy that product. The thing that affects a lot of us and that people talk about all the time in, in YouTube videos is people buying pre-loved items or, or resold new items that are presenting themselves either through a site that's like apparently does authentication and all the rest of it or just through Instagram or private sellers and it turns out that that product's fake so they've been ripped off 
as well as the fake being out there in, in existence and how that was made and who's profiting from that. So I just wanted to make that point is that, you know, people going into buying fakes, they are not being duped or ripped off. They're going into it willingly as a partner in that transaction. But people selling fake bags. So that girl who um, bought a replica Louis Vuitton bag, whoever's doing that, that's not a legal business. I don't know how they got past Amazon or all the rest of it, but th that happens. So that person is obviously probably not running a fully legitimate business, paying all their taxes and contributing in that way. Because if they were doing everything through official channels, they're going to get rumbled and shut down. Because you can't go around by selling bags that say Louis Vuitton all over them and being completely honest and saying these are copies. Counterfeit goods are frankly illegal. Um, so they're stealing the intellectual property from the brand because they're directly copying their product without their authorization. They're not manufacturing them to the same standards. You know, if you are Louis Vuitton, all of your facilities you have to meet. Let's say you've got a factory in France. You've got to meet the labor laws in France, the tax, the health and safety in your factories. There are so many, so people could say there's too much red tape, but there, there are regulations for how things are produced, manufactured, sold. And when you are just producing fakes, you are going round all of that, which is why they can do it cheaply. Um, Da, 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 da. What else do we want to get onto on that topic? I just don't want to miss anything. Okay, so officially, the, I found one one um, article put out where the National Fraud Office and an academic from the Open University they they cross funded like a project looking into this, and um, um, what they found was that yes, profits from the sale of replica designer goods, and this isn't just bags; this is all sorts of different products, are used to fund organized crime and the drug trade. So not all, but there's a big strong link. And that's what I had assumed. And that seems to be the case. That 3 million people a year in the UK alone, knowingly buy fake designer items. So that's knowingly. That doesn't include all the people who are ripped off because they go on a site and they pay. Because obviously you're not gonna buy a fake bag for $30 thinking it's the real thing. When they're really cheap, you know it's fake you're going into it buying a fake. When it's like five, six hundred pounds or up, you're thinking this is the price for this pre-loved item. It's being described to me as a genuine item and, and that's when that they're actually stealing from you and that's against the law when they do that. Um, Louis Vuitton's statement on it is that it is essential to fight the illegal networks that undermine human rights, environmental standards and the economy. Um, they feel quite rightly, they're not pro all these replicas being out there because of some of the reasons I mentioned earlier that it reduces the brand's cachet and brands such as Chanel and Louis Vuitton they want they're taking steps all the time to sort of increase the prestige or exclusivity that's why you can't just walk into Hermes and buy a Birkin and they kind of try to be selective about rightly or wrongly who they sell it to that's why I think the Chanel classic flaps they just keep putting them up and up and up because they don't want necessarily just everyday women like me to own them. They want people who have the entire lifestyle because it makes their products look more luxurious. Um, Louis Vuitton have been, we've all talked about this, they've been cutting back on their manufacturing of the more, I'm doing this because I'm not into this basic bitch thing, but they've been cutting back on their manufacture of some of the more simple canvas items because they want to move more into the, up with the super brands like more leather exclusive bags like the cappuccines and stuff like that so they don't they want to move away from every British like they don't want every high street in the world to just be covered in women going in out you know going about their daily lives in casual high street clothing with a never full on some of them are fake some of them are real they want to get away from that and waffling but you know what I mean so brands don't want fakes out there now the in terms of like criminal law in my country, that I, I did find online one statement from someone in the police and um, that ha was uh, part of this research that the National Fraud Office did. Um, and they were saying that really though, it's down to the brands. They don't feel like with, with resources being stretched in this country, you're never gonna get the government spending loads of money on cracking down on fakes. They don't like the tax avoidance side and all of that stuff, but 
at the end of the day, they believe that it shouldn't be a police matter as it's really expensive for them to catch these people and stop it and someone else just springs up. They think that the brands should be the ones as they make so much money in investing in cracking down on the fakes. And so that is something that all of these brands have departments that apparently work in collaboration with trading standards and online regulation and stuff like that to try and stop it. Anyway, so what are my conclusions? That yeah, it is bad. It's not something that I would ever do willingly, but there are some other gray areas. So um, in a lot of the articles and research that I found, where is it? It's really bad that I'm looking down all the time at the piece of paper, I really apologize about that. Right, here we are. There were a few quotes I found from this Open University like professor who led this piece of research saying that, um, in terms of the environmental stuff, they, that the manufacture of fake medicines, fake toys, and some fake homewares that really come into close contact with people, I don't know, like bedding, blankets, um, fake Disney, like dressing up things, and things like that where people will buy them online on Amazon and eBay thinking they're the real thing, but that in a way, the authorities are much more worried about that in terms of harm to health than they are with designer handbags because of the way that they use. So people will often think that they can, you know, they'll buy fake medicine online and they don't realise they're doing that. And actually there's loads of things that shouldn't be in there that could really harm you. Same as fake toys, you know, toys are all manufactured to set international safety standards and there are guidelines on like what age, you know, not under 36 months, not under, you know, 48 months or whatever. And obviously if you're buying toys that you think are Disney or some other big toy brand and they're not, they might not be safe for kids, they might have chemicals on them, you know, there's been stories of, I found in researching this, of children with burns around their mouths where they've, they're toddlers and they're chewing on a toy but it's actually been made with, it's been part of the process of making it, it's had harmful chemicals that has then touched their skin, um, so that apparently there, there isn't perceived to be a massive environmental or sort of safety thing around fake bags than there is with other types of counterfeit goods thought that was interesting and then i also found in quite a few articles by bloggers and other people like who are looking at it from a very environmental standpoint that um some people were saying that cheap poor quality products which include these fakes are all harmful and that um some of these cheap products are um some of these fake bags are kind of no worse than fast fashion products from the likes of Primark and other discount online retailers in that some of those things are made um, in factories and facilities where the human rights and stuff is poor, the working conditions are poor and the environmental impact is poor. So if you buy a fake bag for $30, I feel it's extremely unlikely that you'll still be using it in 20 years, whereas my real Louis Vuitton bags I would think that I would so high-end luxury goods tend to have a slightly less awful environmental footprint and I know I'm going to get attacked for saying that because every example is different but like if you buy a leather bag and you use that leather bag for many many years you're probably less likely well I have you know I don't buy fast fashion handbags hardly at all anymore I've got a couple here full disclosure that I'm going to show you um, but if you buy quality, whether it's a wool coat or whether it's a ski jacket, whether it's leather boots, if the better the quality, that doesn't necessarily mean super, super high end, but the better quality your items, if you're investing in those items, you're probably not going to buy loads of cheap dupes alongside. So I remember in the year and a half that I was saving up to get my Chloe Susanna boots, I probably bought six to eight pairs of high street leather or non-real leather boots that I thought were similar and they all ended up going to the charity shop just because of wear and tear or I didn't really like them as much as the real deal so when I got the real deal I cleared out everything else so it's the same with these fakes I think there are probably quite a lot of people who have quite a big collection of these but they are on an in and out cycle and it all ends up in landfill and as you know, we just can't afford as a planet, as a society, as a population, we just can't do that anymore on that level. So some people were saying, I found three or four articles that were saying, yeah, OK, let's all bash these fakes. But don't forget, there are loads of other products that are 
very fast fashion stuff. So if you buy, let's say, you know, the circular crossbody bags are really have been really in. And let's say you buy one of those for $9.99 in any, you know, Peacocks, Primark or wherever, um, you're not gonna have that bag in a couple of years. It's gonna fall apart. It's usually made of PVC. We're trying to reduce plastic. So I just don't want to be here saying fake bags are terrible, but everything else is fine. I'm just trying to present what arguments I found when I was digging around. Um, so there you kind of have it. And my other thing was that um, I wanted to say is that there were lots of comments made to me under that girl's video of like, well, what do you expect me to do? I'm a student. I don't want to spend $500 or $1,000. I would say, I think it's better to buy what you can afford, what your budget is, and get the best in that budget. So for example, this is just my opinion. I would rather go to Zara. Like, I love the Pocha Accessoire from Louis Vuitton and they're very hard to get now and they seem to only have the monogram but a little that kind of very classic style pochette I would rather if I couldn't afford or I didn't think it was good value to buy the genuine article I think you're better off going to Whistles or Zara or any like high street fashion brand that does real leather design led bags and buy something that's good quality but doesn't have a, a, a logo or a brand on it that's just my opinion so there's that level there's also great brands out there like Aspinall and um, Coach and Tory Burch those kind of contemporary um, Kate Spade where you where they make really good quality leather bags but they are more affordable um, then you've also got cloth bags or other bags just i just have a problem with like river island primark topshop all these fast fashion kind of businesses that have non-leather plastics and they are all at a price point like 29.99 and under where they i've bought those bags in the past and they do unstitch and they do fall apart that's what i worry about um what I was going to say as well, I just wanted to get on to my thoughts on Inspired By. Not direct fakes, but Inspired By. And I do have a couple. And in particular, this bag. This is really new. This is a Jelly Star BRG Designs bag that I really like. You can tell when you look at this that it's modelled on or based on the style of the Hermes Kelly. I mean, really quite closely, right? The proportions the way that the straps are attached, the hardware, it is a Kelly style bag. And there are many people, maybe people who own real Hermes or whatever, who would say, how can you do a video talking about the issues around counterfeit goods when you have this? Well, I don't know what my answer to that is. It's not claiming to be the real deal. It's just inspired by. It isn't, it's good quality, I think, for the price that I paid for it. I, didn't, I don't want to pay for a real Hermes Kelly at this point in my life. This is a fun jelly bag. Um, so that's my justification. Is it mass-produced plastic? Yeah. I'm just being honest. That's the thing about these videos. I'm not, I'm not sitting here like a saint saying, you know, I'm anti-fake and I'm perfect. Not at all. I'm saying I am anti-fake because it is really dodgy and criminal. These, I don't know where to put that on the ethics scale of things. So I absolutely loved the real bag that this is kind of based on. But there's no branding on it anywhere trying to claim that it's Chanel. In fact, it's got more of a reissue style lock, whereas the real one of these from Chanel has got a CC lock. This was really cheap from Amazon. Is this as bad as a direct fake? I don't know. My friend Jem, she won't mind me saying this, she often has things that are derivative or inspired by certain things. So, so she has some really nice, really high quality designer leather sandals. And because they look a bit like the Hermes Oren sandals, she's been really bashed for having them. I do think it's different. I do think 
that ripping off someone's exact design and also putting labels and names on it that claim to be the real deal and selling those poor quality things at a price where people obviously know that it's fake or the super fakes where you're actually tricking customers into thinking they're buying the real thing. I do think that's different. I do think I don't really understand how they get away with, for example, the other day I went to John Lewis and I tried on the Coach Cassie that everyone's going crazy about. Now this is a leather bag with lovely brass hardware that is very, very, very close to the dimensions and style of the Pochette Mati. I had to, I have to say, the price of that bag is around 350 pounds. The Pochette Mati is around, I don't know what now, 1500 pounds. And I felt like the quality of the Coach Cassie was better quality than my Pochette Mati at home. Um, I love my Pochette Mati, but it's been tricky to own. There seems to be lots of things like, pi um, I don't know, like stitching, hardware, glazing that go wrong with that and it ends up having to go back. Mine's had to go back once. Uh, this Coach Cassie looks beautifully made, very, very standard. You know, you, you could hold up two, they look exactly the same. There isn't as much variation. Really lovely, smooth, soft leather, perfect stitching. Same layout though and everything. Obviously the lock is a different shape, but I don't understand that aspect of it the intellectual property aspect where other legit brands can almost copy um, another a designer product like you used to get this a lot with Michael Kors I'm not sure if it's still happening now but they they would come out with totes that looked exactly like a Louis Vuitton tote except it had Michael Kors on it not Louis Vuitton I don't know how they get around that obviously maybe the copyrights restrict what you can you know if you design a really functional shape bag then other people are going to be able to do that unless you patent that bag. As long as you make it slightly different, then they can copy it. But what I'm saying is they're not claiming that it is that product and ripping off the exact design. Anyway, I don't have a, a real con major conclusion other than, yeah, I don't support um, buying replicas of high-end goods. I think that the way that they're made and the people that are profiting from it, I don't really want to give them my money. And I would hope that when I buy my designer goods, I'm getting something that is good quality. It's going to last a long time. Um, but the grey area for me is these inspired by items. I really love this. Um, I've added this gold chain. Um, I like to have some inexpensive pieces. I would hope that... The only thing about this that is unethical is that it's plastic and we're trying to reduce the amount of plastic that we bring into this house. But um, yeah, I can't, I don't want to have everything just really high end designer. I did at one point and now I want a mixture of things so that things are more functional and they, they don't get damaged. You know, like I was watching um, one of Andrew's videos the other day and or this morning actually and she showed a new clear plastic bag that she bought like a beach bag and she said that yeah I've got a Chanel Deauville and I think that Chanel put the Deauvilles out as a summer beach poolside bag and if you are what's her face Tamara Eccleston and you're a billionaire and you've got 30 Deauvilles you probably will sling it around on the beach but if you're a normal woman like me who saved up to get something that she really loves and she's got a Chanel Deauville I'm not going to just use it poolside I do need some more affordable options, but I think there are other ways to go than buying rip-offs, replicas, fakes, whatever you want to call them. Um, I hope this was interesting. Um, it's a bit of an experiment doing something like this. I'm sure I'm going to get bashed. It's inevitable. Let me know what your opinion is. If there's anything I haven't really covered, put some more information or your thoughts down in the comments, but I don't know what this was in the comments below. Please rate this video, subscribe. I need feedback because when I see how many people liked and enjoyed a video and if I've got new subscribers following a new video, it gives me a sense of like, that's what people want. If I don't get many views or I don't get many much interaction, then I know that maybe that's something people are not as interested in. So if you could um, subscribe and also hit the bell so that you get notified when I upload, I am starting to upload more regularly again. It'd be really encouraging so try and do that and i hope you have a great weekend i'll see you next time Bye. you went where the sweet shop yeah where else did you go uh to the museum you went to the museum what did you see there mm -hmm. there was
was no clowns there that time. There was just a picture. I'm glad there were no clowns. I don't like clowns. No. No, the show was ruined, so the kids have to be clowns. The clowns have to, the kids have to be clowns.